Welcome to Ocean Heights Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you have are gathering with us and that you are with here with us wherever you are. Uh, we look forward to uh, that day when we can see each other face to face. But right now, this is the best we can do. Ocean Heights Presbyterian Church is located in the southern part of New Jersey. For those of you who don't live here, we want you to know where we are. We're not that far away from Atlantic City, and uh, we're in Egg Harbor Township. We're a progressive Christian congregation, and we joyfully welcome people of all walks of life, celebrating the difference of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, and ability of all people as children of God. We are so very thankful that you are with us. Uh, we don't have a time of offering during this online worship, but we continue to um, offer our tithes, our pledges, our offerings. If, if you so desire, you can make use of our PayPal um, account, and that is posted on the Facebook page. We've pinned it to the top of the page. And we're so very grateful for those of you who have been uh, off, uh, giving us an offering that way. It helps us to do uh, the ministry that we've committed to do in the coming year. We're very thankful for you. After this time of worship for our congregational members, we will, we've sent out a Zoom link for a class on conversations on the Sacrament of Holy Communion and the Reverend Jeff Eaton and I will have a conversation. So at 11.15 or a little bit before, you can come uh, use that link on Zoom that we sent out to the congregation. And uh, we will uh, have our time for adult education and very thankful for uh, Jeff and his willingness to do that. Next week, we'll have another class and uh, Matt Purinton will be talking to us about the theology and the church uh, through the eyes of one with disabilities. And again, that class will be at 11.15 next week as well. My friends, you are Ocean Heights Presbyterian Church where you are gathered today. Whether you're on a couch or in your kitchen or out on a porch, uh, we are grateful that you have gathered and you are the congregation, the church today. So welcome. Let us join our hearts and minds in the worship of God.
mention that as we come together in worship in the Reformed tradition, we uh, do most, a lot of our worship in between two pieces of furniture. One is the communion table, and our table is always set, always here to remind us that we are a people gathered around the table, and that this table represents a sacrament, and that sacrament of communion binds us together as the body of Christ. So we begin here uh, at worship at the table. We move to the font to remember the sacrament of baptism and God's call and claim on our life. And in between these two sacraments, the liturgy of worship takes place. So if you will join me now in the call to worship, you are invited to speak any and all of these words because we don't have that opportunity to hear each other in a responsive way, but liturgy is written to speak out loud. So I encourage you to do just that where you are gathered. So let us speak together the call to worship. Today is the day God has made. Let us be glad and rejoice. To rejoice means we express joy and delight. Today is the day God has made. Let us be glad. To be glad means that we gather expecting cheerfulness, joy, and pleasure. Today is the day God made. Let us worship God and enjoy God forever. Today is the day. And we join together in our hymn. It's to the tune of O oh, Worship the King, All Glorious Above. These words written, the text written by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette, appropriate for our scripture today. Let us sing together. goodness poured out for us. We come to these waters with hope. That hope that we remember and celebrate the promise God has given to us. We also come to these waters with hopelessness because there are times in our lives that we feel just that. And hopelessness sometimes becomes that moment when we become empty enough, we put down, we let go enough 
to allow God's covenant, God's grace to enter our lives and to give to us what we need. So we come each week to remember God's promise to us, first made with Abraham and Sarah. So friends, come. Come to this font and let us join in a prayer for reconciliation. Let us pray together. Holy One, who sees beyond the future, we confess that we are short-sighted and struggle to trust what is before us. When life doesn't happen in a timely manner, we are inclined to take matters in our own hands, laughing off your promise. Eternal Keeper, your intention to love never fades. Forgive us for overthinking and second-guessing. Breathe into our apprehension confidence that we might hold fast to your steadfast love. Breathe into our grieving joy that might again uh, sense purpose in life. Breathe into our stubbornness, patience, that we might embrace new life. Hear now, O oh God, our silent prayers as we sit in company with others. the gift of new beginnings. May Christ surround us and be with us. May the peace of Christ be with you today and also with you. And this is that moment that we share Christ's peace with one another. And uh, we encourage you to do that with those that are gathered with you in your home. If you have folks in your home. If you do not and you are alone, know that you're not alone. And may the peace of Christ be with you. That peace opens us and prepares us for the scripture for this day. Today I've chosen Genesis 18 verses 10 through 15. In ancient days, um, a person's history and all that comes with that history continued through a lineage. Sarah and Abraham, long before this passage we read today, had already trusted God's promise that they would be blessed with children, generations to follow them long after they had died. Sarah and Abraham trusted up to a point. God's promise for the birth of their lineage did not happen in a timely manner. And when life does not happen in a timely manner, we are inclined to take matters in our own hands 
And that is what happened in this story. But God had full intention to fulfill the promise made to Abraham and Sarah. And just when it should have been too late for such a promise to be fulfilled, Sarah and Abraham received news from God. In this episode, Sarah standing outside the tent, their home, overhearing what at this point in her life seems ridiculous. So we turn to the 18th chapter of Genesis to verses 10 through 15 and listen to this paraphrase of this passage. Now Sarah, whose husband was Abraham, was old. They were well on in their years. Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Upon hearing the news spoken to her husband, Sarah laughed. She laughed when it was said, when I come back here next year, Sarah will have a child. Sarah laughed. The message was spoken to Abraham who was inside the tent while Sarah was standing near the entrance listening as if she had a glass pressed up against the wall to hear what was being said. The news had everything to do with her, her body, her future, her life. What she heard, well, it made her laugh. And she says to herself, really, really now that I'm so old and my husband's even older, pleasure is to come to me again? Sarah laughed. The story goes on. Yahweh God hears Sarah laugh. Yahweh God doesn't ask Sarah why she is laughing, but rather asks Abraham. I guess the writer of the story can't imagine God speaking directly to a woman. That seemed too laughable. So God asks Abram, why is your wife Sarah laughing? What's so funny? Oh, God asks Abraham a question, but doesn't wait for a reply. Can you imagine Abraham squirming about trying to come up with a reply to explain his wife to God? That image can make a person laugh. Yahweh doesn't wait for a reply and makes clear, saying, laugh all you want. When I make a promise, I keep the promise. And at this, Sarah steps out of hiding and responds, but I didn't laugh. And this episode of God's story ends with God saying, oh, but indeed you did laugh. The story of our faith. Amen. Today, we continue one last chapter, the end, ending chapter of a story called Miss Mary Mack. A story that I've been writing about my grandmother. A story that George Arsenis has graciously helped to illustrate. And this chapter of Miss Mary Mack is called Miss Mary Mack's laughter. So here's the story. Sometimes it's just fun to pretend. Put on a hat or a big coat, a pair of pink pumps or a scary mask, a patch over your eye or a really long cape. Put on some funny hair if you dare. Wrinkle up your nose, kick up your toes, point your fingers, stomp your feet, clap your hands, roll over on the grass, jump up and down, dance the hula, talk with a funny voice. It's your choice. Sometimes it's just fun to pretend. Miss Mary Mack was the best at pretending. 
She could make hats and capes, big funny pants, crazy colored socks, rings for your fingers, and even a wig. And when she was finished, she would teach, teach you to jig. She would say, don't be shy. Go ahead. Be silly. It will make you laugh. Sometimes when we pretend, we learn something important about ourselves. Sometimes when we laugh, we find out some things are not as important as we think. Miss Mary Mack would say, you know who you are and what you can do because there's only one you. You can't know who you are if you don't take time to imagine and wonder, pretend and explore. You can't know all that is in you if you can't laugh at yourself. Who knows all the things you can do and what you can be. So stop what you're doing and give it a try. Why don't you flap your arms like a bird and fly? You're never too old to try something new. You're never too important to do something silly. Really. So go ahead, stop what you're doing. Do something today that makes you laugh because every day there is room for a giggle. You're never too old to giggle or laugh so hard you jiggle. Miss Mary Mack would say, the world simply needs more laughter. There are far too many things in this world that are serious and bland. So go take a stand. Be the person that starts the smile. Be the reason smiles break into laughter. Be someone others want to take after. The end. And we thank you for coming to the Sycamore Quilt, for listening to these simple stories. We thank you. We come now to our second passage for today, again from the Hebrew Scriptures, from Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Yahweh fashioned an earth creature out of the clay of the earth and blew into its nostrils the breath of life. And the earth creature became a living being. God created a human from the soil of the earth and breathed into its nostrils the breath of life. And the human became a living being a being filled with breath, breathing in and out, continuing life today and to tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. Will you pray with me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and redeemer. Amen. In Frederick Beekner's book, Telling the Truth, the gospel of uh, comedy, tragedy, and fairy tale, he reflects on this story of Sarah's laughter, saying it, it reflects something of the biblical gospel. God's promise comes to us as a joke, because it is completely unforeseeable. Is it possible, Beekner wonders, to say that it is only when you hear the gospel as a wild and marvelous joke that you really hear it at all? Heard as anything else, the gospel is the church's thing, the preacher's thing, the lecturer's thing. Heard as a joke, high and unbidden, and ringing with laughter, it can only be God's 
thing, Beekner concludes. Certainly we can see and sense the humor of Sarah's story. The irony of her situation even caused her to laugh loud enough for God to hear, which leads to a rather funny exchange. God says loud enough for Sarah to hear. She laughed. Sarah, wanting more than anything to deflect God's attention, says, no, I, I didn't laugh, knowing full well she had, because it's a ludicrous prospect that any woman her age could possibly become pregnant. God responds to Sarah, yes, you did laugh. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. It, it's kind of funny. Come to think of it, if a woman had written this story, we might have heard even more. Like, what woman in her right mind would want to bear a child so late in life? So, yeah, God, I did laugh. I laughed, and I would go further to say, you've got to be crazy out of your mind. And perhaps God is laughably crazy for loving us without condition. Without condition. There it is. Right there. Like Sarah, we laugh at the prospect of being loved without condition. Humanly, it seems impossible to do anything without having conditions attached, so we laugh it off as fake news. And then on those occasions when we live into what we thought was impossible, like Sarah, we're left to consider the whole scope of life. And like Sarah, we sense God lovingly standing at our side, smiling, waiting for that moment to say, <laughs> told you so. I told you it was possible. And by the way, I heard you laugh. <laughs> if it says, Beekner says, God's promise comes to us as a joke because it is completely unforeseeable. So we laugh. Sometimes we laugh it off and in so doing, push away God's goodness. We take matters in our own hands, only doing what seems practical and provable. Other times we laugh it in, a way of saying we become so filled with gratitude that we let God's goodness in. And in so doing, the improbable becomes real. And when the real becomes something we can hold in our hands and in our arms and sing a lullaby to, well, that's when the gospel, the good news of God's love, becomes so very good. This week I veered away from the selected scripture passages today because of the memory of my grandmother's laughter which, by the way, is so very alive and present in my mother today. My grandmother's laughter led me to reflect on the gift of laughter that God has given to us. A gift we often push aside as something that does not have value when we're considering things like the meaning and the purpose of life. And yet, Laughter is at the very root of life. Laughing is breathing, and breathing is a serious matter. Without breath, life is impossible. Genesis 2-7 tells of God's gift of breath. God breathes into us, and this breath gives us life. This breath sustains life. And if you didn't know it, laughter is one of the most effective ways of breathing. The Long Association says that laughter makes our breathing more effective. When you laugh, your lungs rid of stale air 
and make room for oxygen to enter. This is because laughter helps to expand alveoli, which are in our lungs. They're little tiny air sacs of which we have about 300 to 500 million. Expanding these means that our area for oxygen exchange is bigger. And the more oxygen that enters our lungs, the healthier we are, the more alive we are. Laughter is breathing in a big way. One thing my grandmother taught me was that there are far too many things in this world that are serious and bland. We even make breathing too serious of an exercise, so much so when we remind other people the value breathing has for our health, especially when you are in a time of grief or anxiety, so many people begin to tune us out. Sometimes we would rather just hold our breath and pretend all the serious and bland would just go away. My, my Nana had the imagination and the courage to use God's gift of breathing in a way that brought joy and hope. She would say, Blake, laugh at yourself. Because when you do, you discover the things weighing you down aren't as heavy as you make them out to be. And those hardships that are too heavy to bear well, laughter will give you strength to live into something better. That's what happened to Sarah. She laughed, and then she lived into something better. It's also important to laugh together, my Nana would say, because it helps us not to take each other so seriously. It allows us to see the humanity in each other. Victor Borg, a Danish comedian, conductor, and pianist, says laughter is the closest distance between two people. Karl Barth, a Swiss Reformed theologian, says laughter is the closest thing to the grace of God. Sarah laughed, and this laughter became the closest distance between her and God. Sarah laughed, and the laughter brought God's grace as close as her next breath. Sarah laughed, and then God laughed, and their mutual laughter opened the way for God, for what God had intended all along to become. That's what laughter does. It opens us. It helps us to see what we can't see. You could say that laughter is a way of justice. When we laugh, we share something in common, creating a bond. And every human deserves the privilege to be happy. Every human deserves a reason and the space to laugh. I can remember a group of bullies at a bus stop. I wasn't a schoolboy when this happened. I was an adult. And so were they. What you boys laughing at? As if the laughter from another group was a threat to the freedom from their freedom to abuse. And so it is. Laughter is a threat to the status quo. In an article titled, What Can Laughter Do for Social Justice? Stephanie Newman writes, in cases where the people laughing are more oppressed than, they, than they're laughing at, solidarity can bring with it a sense of power. Laughter has power to change systems. Talk to any black comedian and you will hear how deep biting truths can be spoken to an entirely white audience to the reception of laughter, proving that laughter has the power to open minds and hearts. 
Talk to any drag queen and you will discover that what might look ridiculous and over the top really has power to dig deep down and discover the person that's really there. We've long looked, overlooked the gift of laughter. The church has made faith far too serious and bland an affair. We've forgotten how to laugh if we even knew how to laugh as a church. We've seen only one side of laughter in this story with Sarah. We've deemed laughter as frivolous and unnecessary. How can you talk about laughing at a time like this, Pastor? And yet, laughter physically and spiritually heals. Laughter is a source of power creating justice. Laughter is tangible evidence of God's grace. Seems to me there's no time like the one we're living to find the imagination and the courage to live God's gift of laughter. God knows we need a good laugh. Hallelujah. Amen. And friends, on this day that we remember our mothers, on this day that we continue together in worship, let us come together in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Great God, we only want to be known and loved for who we are. For this kind of loving and being is our home. Today we give thanks for those mothers who have and had the gift of creating home, for loving without condition, for persevering through their own stories and ours, and who continue to love and lead us to a better place. We also pray for those mothers who struggled with life, and because of such struggles could not create a sense of peace for themselves or their children. Recognizing that every person longs for peace, we whisper this prayer that peace might be theirs, that peace might permeate our memories of them. We pray for those women longing to be a mother, wanting more than anything for their hearts to be overflowing with love. Good Lord, embrace their pain and longing and give them a sense of comfort. We pray for mothers who do not have the strength to enjoy this day, who struggle mentally or physically and are unable to give or receive. O oh, Savior, share your healing balm. Anoint them with your presence in a way that offers relief and grace. We pray for all, despite their gender, identity, or relationship, who offer gentle, tender, loving nurture, who give the best of themselves even when they are tired, who are there when no one else is. We pray for all of those who nurture and comfort and teach and love. And God, for the part of you that is a mother, we thank you. We thank you that you laugh with us, that you teach us to laugh at ourselves. We thank you that in this laughing, this mutual laughing, 
the promise and the love that you intended from the very beginning become a reality. So in this place, in this world filled with so many serious and bland things, breathe into us, O oh God, life. Breathe into us grace and love, we pray. Amen. So as we prepare to end this time of worship, let us remind each other who we are and how we intend to live faith. Please join in the mission statement of our congregation. We say these words together. By the grace of God, the people of Ocean Heights Presbyterian Church, a member congregation of the Presbyterian Church USA, gather for worship and ministry in the name of Christ. We joyfully welcome people from all walks of life celebrating the difference of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, and ability of all people as children of God. We strive to be the body of Christ in the world, working for peace and justice for all persons. We join with people of good faith to address the threats of climate change and the degradation of God's good creation. As a progressive Christian congregation, we endeavor to understand and practice the faith we have from Scripture, informed by the wisdom of science and the theological and cultural diversity of the world's people. We give thanks to God for the community we share in worship and ministry for the sake of a world where love is more possible. Amen. And we end this time of worship singing hymn number seven. It's titled, Mothering God, You Gave Me Birth. this gift to come together. You give us the gift of laughter. You breathe into us hope. And we give you thanks. So my friends, go from this time of worship. Get off of your chairs. Get out of your living rooms. Stand up from your porch, wherever it is that you are gathered. Stand up. Look out. 
Take in God's grace and don't underestimate the power of laughter, the gift of breathing that God gives to us. So go into this world filled with God's joy and share it. Hallelujah. Amen. So I hope that you find something to laugh at today. Maybe it might be something right in front of you. Maybe it's me. I don't know. <laughs> I've learned how to laugh at myself, and uh, I hope that you can do that as well. And come and join us again. We'll be here next Sunday at 10 a.m. And for those in the congregation, we'll see you in a few moments, those who gather with us for a class on a conversation on the sacrament of Holy Communion. Peace be with you, and we'll see you next week.